One of the most powerful tools while attacking Active Directory is Mimikatz. But instead of just making videos showing you how to execute it, let's actually get deeper into how this tool really works. So in this series of videos, we're going to build as much as we can of Mimikatz functionalities, and one of its functionality is dumping the LSATs process. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. So let's get started. Before we dive into the coding part, let's cover some fundamental concepts. We have mentioned it before that we are going to dump the LSAS process. But what exactly is LSAS? To understand that, let's first clarify what a process is. When you run an application like Chrome or any other program on your computer, it operates as a process. Think of a process as a container that encapsulates the execution of a program. Now inside this container, this process, there is a set of codes that define the Chrome process functionality. And this is what calls threads. Now LSAS, Local Security Authority subsystem, is also a process. But what is the utility of that process? Alright, let me give you an example. Imagine you are using your computer and decide to log in to your user account. When you enter your username and password, the operating system needs to verify your credentials before granting you access. This is where the LSAS process comes into play. So when you sign in, LSAS retrieve your entered credential and compare them to the stored user account information in the security account manager, the SAM database. Now LSAS will verify your credential with the stored ones and then grant you access or get an access denied. Now what we want to do is dump in LSAS, but why? Because it basically stores users' password hashes, Kerberos tickets, QRB, TGT, NTLM hash, which is important for creating golden ticket that we have talked about in the last video. So being able to dump this process memory will be very useful for persistence. Now let's cut talking and start coding. So first of all, you will need a C++ compiler to run your code, because we're going to use C++. Don't worry, I'm going to explain every single line of code, but it's better if you have some C, C++ coding experience, like you know what a struct is, pointers, and so on. Personally, I will use Visual Studio as my compiler, but you are free to use any compiler of your choice. Now, the primary goal of this video is dumping LSAS, but let's split this call to smaller goals to know exactly what we need to do. Now, to dump the LSAS process, we need to have admin privileges. So our program first need to check if we have the required privileges. Let's do that first. So let's create a C++ console project, name it Amashu, then just create the project. There we go. We got our first program in C++. Hello world. Let's remove all of those comments and run the program to verify if everything is working fine. We got hello world. That's cool. Let's use the namespace std to remove this std here. Great. The first function we're gonna build is checking if we have elevated privileges or not. But how can we do that? First of all, we need to know that when a user logs into their computer successfully after the LSAS verification, an access token is created for that user. Think of it as a session. And this access token is a data structure that holds information about the user identity, security groups, privileges that this user have, and other security-related attributes. You can take a look at the Microsoft documentation of what this access token holds. As you can see here, it contains the security ID for that user, the SID for the groups that this user is a member of, the access control list that this user have on other objects, and other security attributes. Now, when you log in into your computer, of course you're gonna run multiple processes, multiple applications. Each of these processes need to know what privileges it has and what actions it can prefer. To handle this, Windows takes the user access token and assign a copy of it to each process that the user runs. Now the code we are writing to dump LSAS is a process itself. Let's run it and go to the task manager, search for its name which is Amashu, and as you can see, it runs under the user he hack, which is the user I have logged in with. That's mean that this process have a copy of the user access token. And because we control the code of that process, means that we can take a look at the access token assigned to it. By reading the access token, we will know whether we have the required privileges or not. Because as we said before, one of the things that the access token hold is what privileges we have on the system. Now let's do it. So let's create a function that is called isElevatedProcess that returns a boolean. We're going to declare the variable isElevated as a boolean that's going to be the return value. And then we will declare a handle called the access token. But what the heck is a handle? Well, basically, a handle refers to a special kind of data structure or identifier that represents a resource. In our case, we declare the access token that we're going to retrieve from the current process, which is the code we are running now, as a handle. Because as we said before, the access token is a data structure. 
and we don't know the structure of this access token, so we just declare it as a handle. Now to retrieve this access token from the current process, we need to use some Windows API functions. But what is Windows API? Well, think of it as a bunch of files that contain functions that we use as developers hackers to perform some special tasks. Now in C++, to have access and call those Windows API functions, we need to include a header file called windows.h. The first Windows API function that we're going to use is open process token. This function is used to open an access token associated with a specific process. The first parameter is the process that we want to check its access token. In our case, it's the current process, which means the application we are working on right now. We're going to use another API call, which is the get current process that's going to return the current process we are running as a handle. Then the second parameter is this desired access, what we want to do to that access token. In our case, we just want to query the access token, just read it. So we're going to use the token query parameter to do that. Please check the MSDN of the access rights of the access token. You will find there other rights that you can use like token duplicate, token impersonate, and so on. Now, the third and the last parameter is a pointer to the handle where this open process token function will return the access token of this current process, which is the access token variable. If that was successfully pulled out, then we're going to need to declare a variable called the elevation with a token elevation type. And token elevation is a structure that indicates whether a token has elevated privileges or not based on the token is elevated to attribute. Don't worry, that will make sense for you in the next lines of code. Now we're going to declare a double word token check variable that will hold the size of token elevation structure. And we're going to use the get token information API function that will take the access token as the first parameter where we want to get the information from. The second parameter is an enum that will specify which types of informations we want to retrieve from this access token. In our case, we want the elevation level of the access token, which means what kind of privileges this access token have. That's why we're going to specify the token elevation enum. Then the third parameter is a pointer to the buffer where we want to put the return data of that function, which is the elevation variable. The next parameter specify the size of the elevation buffer, which is size of elevation. And the last parameter is a pointer to the number of bytes required to save the information returned by the function, which is token check variable. Make sense? Great. Now, if the elevation info is extracted from the access token successfully, we update the is elevated variable that we have declared in top with elevation the token is elevated. Because the token is elevated attribute of the elevation variable return a true if we have the admin privileges and false if we don't. And that's it. We close curly braces and then we check if the access token variable is not null. Then we close the handle that we have opened it before and then we return is elevated. Now, let's go to the main and we write if is elevated process print f we have the required privileges else print f we don't have the required privileges let's run our program and as you can see we don't have the required privileges but let's go to the executable file run it as an administrator as you can see we have the required privileges it's working that's great now the next function we're going to create is getting the process pid by its name which means we just specify the name lsas.exe for example and the functions return its PID. If you don't know what a PID is, just go to the task manager, search for example for lsas.exe and that's its PID, which is a unique identifier for the time when this process is running. Well, let's start creating the function. We're going to call it get process ID by name and it's going to take a wide string pointer called the process name. And we're going to create a double word variable called process ID that's going to contain the process ID of the process we are looking for. Now, what we want to do basically is collecting all processes running on our system and then loop through them searching for a process with name LSAS. If we found it, set the process ID variable to its process ID. Make sense? Great. We're going to create a handle called snapshot that's going to take a snapshot of all running processes in the system. We're going to use create tool help 32 snapshot windows API call and we're going to pass to it a flag called th32 cs snap process that indicate that we want a snapshot of processes because with this function you can also get a snapshot of threads running or modules but in our case we just want a snapshot of running processes in the system. The second parameter will be set to zero to indicate that we want a snapshot of the current processes. Now, if the snapshot is not equal to an invalid handle value, we're going to create a process entry variable with the process entry 32, which is a struct that represents the attribute that we're going to retrieve. So basically, the process entry is a variable that's going to take 
the process that we gather from the snapshot and we set it to an empty curly braces so all attributes are initialized with their default values. We need to specify the size of the process entry by setting the DW size attribute to size of process entry 32 and the next step is getting the first process from the snapshot and put it in the process entry. To do that, we're going to use the process32 first API call. We pass to it the snapshot that contains a snapshot of all processes. Think of it like an array of all processes and the pointer where we want to save the process, which is the process entry that we have created before. If that's worked correctly, then we need to run a loop. So do open curly braces and we're going to use the current process. We pass to it the process entry.szxe file, which is the name of the executable file for that process. And then we're going to check if the current process name is equal to the process name, which is the parameter of our function. If that's true, we're going to save the process entry th32 process ID in the process ID variable and a break to exit the loop because we have already found the process ID. And then the while condition where basically we're going to use the process32 next win API call to jump to the next process. Now when it's done, we will close the snapshot handle and return the process ID at the end. Great. Let's call the function in the main, so let's declare a wString variable called process name, set to it lsas.exe, which is the process we are looking for its ID, and then create a dword variable called process PID, and assign to it the get process ID by name function, and pass to it the process name. And let's print f lsas PID is process PID. Let's run our program. As you can see, this is the process PID. Let's verify this from the task manager. As you can see, it's the same number. Our function is working the way it should be. Great. Now the last function is the most important one because it's the function that's going to give us the ability to dump the LSAS memory. This function called set privilege that returns a boolean. And this function basically will set the SE debug privilege to our process. Because if we have this privilege, we can debug and adjust or modify the memory of a process owned by another account. And that's exactly what we want to do. Dump in the LSAS process memory. So the first things we're going to do is create a string variable that holds the privilege name, which is SE debug privilege. Then we will declare a wide string version of that privilege name because Windows API function expect a wide string. Then create a pointer to that priv name called priv name with a capital N. Now let's create a variable called priv with type token privileges. That is a struct that will hold the privilege information of our process. Then we create a handle called token priv, which is the access token of our process. We also need to create an LUID variable and LUID in Windows is a local unique identifier that uniquely identify a privilege, user or a group and it is separated into two parts, a higher part with 32-bit length and a lower part with 32-bit length too. Let's assign both of them to zero as an initial value. We're going to also create a boolean called status, assign it to true. That's going to prove if we successfully set the SE debug privilege to our process or not. Let's use the open process token again, set it to the current process, and then the desired access. In the first function, we specify token query because we just want to query the token, but now we want to adjust and modify the privileges. That's why we're going to use the token adjust privilege. And the last parameter is the token priv that's going to hold the access token. If that's return false, that's mean we can't adjust the privileges and we're going to go to exit which is a label that just closed the token priv handle and return the status. Now, the next things we need to do is to retrieve the LUID of the SE debug privilege. To do that, we're going to use the lookup privilege value uh, API function. We pass to it zero as the first parameter, means that we want to look for the privilege name in the local system. And then the priv name that contains the SE debug privilege name and the variable LUID that will hold the LUID of the SE debug privilege that is returned by the local privilege value uh, Windows API function. If this function fails, then we set the status to false and go to exec. Now, if all of that was working as it should be, it's time to set the SE debug privilege to our process. We're going to use the priv struct that we have declared before and set its privilege count attribute to 1, indicating that the number of privileges we want to adjust is only 1, the SE debug privilege. Then we will set the privilege LUID to the LUID variable that we have got using the lookup privilege value. Then we will set the privilege attribute to SE privilege enable if it's true. If not, set it to SE privilege remove. And this just indicates that we want the privilege to be enabled. 
Then we will use the adjust token privilege API call passed to a token priv, which is the access token that we want to change its privileges, and then false, which means only the specified privileges in the priv struct will be modified, and then the priv structure that holds the privileges we want to adjust. And then some other parameters you can check their meaning in MSTN. Then if the adjust token privilege returns false or it's null, we set the status to false and jump to exit. Great. Our function is ready, and before we call it, let's run our code and see if we have the SE debug privileges or not using the process explorer. Let's run our code, go to Windows Explorer, search for MSO, go to properties, security. As you can see here, the SE debug privilege is not enabled. Now let's call the function in the main, so f set privileges printf se debug privilege is enabled, else printf se debug privilege is not enabled. Compile it and run it again, go to process explorer, properties, and as you can see, se debug privileges is enabled successfully. Now that's it, the last things we need to do is just dump in the file. So let's create a file name, you can pass it as an argument, but let's do it the quickest way. So string file name equal to lsas.dump, then we need to convert that to our wild string because as we said before windows api function expects wild string then we will create a pointer to that file now let's create a handle call it output we're going to use the create file windows api function passed with the pointer to the file and the access we want on that file which is generic all access control entry that's basically for control and other parameters that you can look for on the microsoft documentation for that windows api function now let's create a double word variable called process allow that is a combination of two flags. The first one is process vmread, which is going to give us the ability to read the virtual memory of the LSAS process. And the second flag is process query information to be able to query information about the LSAS process. Now let's create a handle called process handle equal to the open process API function, pass to it access allow zero and the process PID. This function will basically open the process with the access rights that we specified in the access allow variable. Then we're going to create an isDump variable that returns a boolean and we're going to use the mini dump API function that's going to take the process handle which is the process we want to dump, the process ID which is the PID of the LSAS process and the output file. And then the mini dump type which is a nanom that stands for mini dump with full memory and set the other parameters to null. If that's returned true, that's mean that the LSAS is dumped successfully and we will find a file called lsas.dump in the directory where the executable file is located else lsas not dumped let's build a solution and then go to its location run it as an administrator as you can see file called lsas the dump is added to this directory now we can take this file and read it with mimikatz or pipecats since we are in windows let's use mimikatz run seqrl mini dump and specify the path of the LSAS the dump file and run seqrl login passwords. As you can see, it shows the NTLM hashes of users that have access to this machine, Kerberos ticket, Kerberos ticket, NTLM hash that we can use for golden ticket and so on. Great.